Reefer Gill here. In this video, I want to talk about dinoflagellates uh, algae. It's basically an algae that's uh, crossed between cyano and diatom plus steroids. This stuff can overwhelm your systems. Many hobbyists had to reset their systems because they couldn't get a handle on it. Others have just walked away from the hobby altogether because of this issue. Dino can grow and smother your corals. It will kill off any fish that attempt to eat it, kill off any snails that attempt to eat it, and it also can kill from afar because it can release uh, toxic soup in your system and start killing off uh, anything that's within its range. If you remember, I started using ChemiClean. I wiped out my cyanobacteria, but this brown, dark brown algae stuff in my sand bed stuck around. I thought it was diatom. You will see in one of the clips on this video where I'm calling it diatom. That's because I was still unsure if it was diatom or not. It has been identified as dino by way of showing the pictures on Reef Central. It has not gone through a microscope test. It's just visually identified as dino. Um, it does have uh, characteristics of being dinoflagellates versus uh, some other type of algae. So I am taking aggressive means and trying to get rid of this stuff. Uh, I will be wrapping this tank with cardboard and going lights out for uh, three days. The video will be talking about identification of, of dino, also be going over some of the treatments that are suggested for killing off dino. So we'll go ahead and uh, show you what the dino looks like in my system. Again, I'm calling it diatoms in this clip, but it is uh, actually uh, dino. Okay, here's a closer look at what I think is a diatom. You could tell where the diatom are, is the thickest and that's in the front of the tank where the light is hitting the sand. You look in the shaded areas, the sand is nice and white and free of any kind of algae. The algae is a brownish goldish color to it and uh, it's really unsightly and uh, so I'm just trying to get rid of this stuff. If you look sideways at the algae, you can see on the very top of the surface, you can see tiny bubbles, which is indicative of dino. Uh, dino uh, also has the bubbles, but it looks more like cyano with the stringiness look to it. I'll keep a closer eye on it to see if uh, that occurs. But right now I think it is just dino, I'm sorry, diatoms, uh, which is a really a normal occurrence to have in almost any system to have an outbreak of diatom allergy which can be caused by um, high phosphates coming from like overfeeding your fish and also high silicate from poor quality water being introduced into the system. As far as the water issue goes, uh, I have not replaced my RO filters since I've purchased the system almost one year ago. So I have ordered new filters from our RO system in the event that silicate is getting through. And I've also ordered a uh, new cleanup crew because the last cleanup crew I had uh, ordered was in December. Uh, cleanup crew's life expectancy is not that great, so it's uh, recommended to replace your cr uh, cleanup crew uh, every uh, few months or so to replenish the ones that have. Uh, okay, and on. this is the package that I purchased from Reefs to Go. I gave them a call, told them what my issues were, how big my tank was, how many. Uh, cleanup crew members I have existing in the system and they recommended the medium uh, Caribbean saltwater cleanup crew with free shipping um, You can see you get 30 blue-legged hermit crabs 20 red-legged her hermit crabs 6 scarlet leg hermit crabs 2 emerald crabs 20 turbo snails 30 Nacerous snails and 20 Sereth snails in addition to these um, items I also picked up the sand sifting starfish and the zoanthids. The 250 pods uh, came free with this order as well. Okay, here's an online picture of a more advanced growth of dino than where my stage is at right now. You could see this one actually starts having the stringy snotty look to it. The bubbles are at the very tips of each snot or string that is coming out of the sand bed. It's matted down on the sand bed just like mine is, just like cyano would be. Um, 
but that's a, a little bit more advanced stage of what it looks like. It'll get on your glass, all your rocks, all your corals, even your pumps. Uh, it's very little effect with flow, with respects of flow. It'll get and grow in the highest flow areas. Um, it's also responsible for the phenomena in, at sea called red tide. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever uh, seen this, but the diatom, I'm sorry, the dino will have an outbreak in the sea water and create the this mass here that you see here that's called a red tide. And in the natural ocean, this stuff can be very, very toxic, uh, as you can see, and it grows at a very quick rate and uh, can take over very fast. Just a little side note there. We just saw a more advanced stage of dino in the sand bed. Now I want to talk about the characteristics and behavior of dino in the system. It's early in the morning, you can see that the sand bed is clear of any algae. However, as the day progresses, that dino is going to return with a vengeance. It's going to be dark, dark brown. It's going to be very thick and matted and have a whole bunch of bubbles on the surface of it. When the lights go off, it seems to diminish and then almost go away. And the next day, it repeats the same cycle. So that's one of the characteristics of dino. Another one is that uh, it will not grow in the shaded areas, like I showed you guys in the video where I was calling it diatom. It will not grow in the shaded areas. It will start to have an appearance of this snotty looking algae and long stringiness to it that can eventually start growing over your corals and causing uh, havoc in your system. Okay, in the video where I was calling the Dino Diatom, I mentioned that I did six hours of research. Since that clip, I've done a lot more research on this topic. Right now, I want to talk about uh, some of the treatments for Dino. One of the biggest mistakes I made was siphoning out the sand and then replacing the siphoned water with fresh mixed salt water. You don't want to do that. During the time you're battling dino, you do not want to do any water changes because any new water into the system is just going to replenish uh, the nutrients there and it's going to continue feeding the dino just like with any other algae We want to try to starve the stuff out and uh, kill it off that way uh, Aggressive sand siphoning is recommended. Obviously you want to uh, Do gravity fed siphoning the other end of the siphon is going to go into a filter sock and any remaining water is going to go back into the system You can use a turkey baster to blast the rocks and sand to kick off any loose particles and then siphon that out. Uh, change out the carbon and uh, GFO as often as possible. The dyno does not like elevated pH levels so it's recommended to elevate the pH to 8.6. Increase your skimmer, uh, your skimmer so that it runs almost wet. Obviously cut back on feeding a coral and fish. You can use hydrogen peroxide uh, one milliliter per every 10 gallons of water. However, it's said in some of the posts that I've read that uh, the anemones can become a little grumpy over it. You can use MB7 to repopulate the beneficial bacteria in your system so that it competes for that nutrition with the uh, dino and hopefully the bacteria will, will prevail and be able to suck up all those nutrients before the, the dino does and can kill it off that way. And then... Uh, Potsy posted on Reef Central that he learned that fresh water can instantly kill the dino. So what he's been doing is taking out rocks that have dino on them, dipping them into a bucket of fresh water, killing off the dino, and then a day or two later doing another rock so that he doesn't kill off the dino all at once and create a spike in ammonia. So if you guys want to be forwarded that link, let me know. All right, here's a look at the tank covered up. I'm gonna do three days of darkness. I used cardboard. That was recommended by Matt at my LFS. The MP40, all I did was just cut out a hole for the MP40 so it's stuck on the glass and secured. Uh, the tops are covered. Uh, obviously, uh, the refugium light is also gonna be off for the three days. If this doesn't work and the dyno comes back, I can do three days of darkness once a month. Um, like I said, the corals are used to storms and whatnot in the ocean, so they're used to not having light. They'll go into hibernation mode, as will the fish. And um, 
won't need to be fed as frequently. Okay guys, so it's been about a month since I've removed the cardboard from the system. I did the three days of darkness. It appears that I have beat this dino issue. The sand bed has been nice and white and clear of any kind of allergy at all for the last month. I wanted to make a couple of points and uh, bring you back to MB7. I wasn't clear in the video what MB7 was. MB7 is Microbacter 7 and what this is is a beneficial bacteria that you introduce into your system. You shut off your skimmer for four hours. The idea is that the uh, beneficial bacteria is going to compete with the same food that the dino consumes. So in essence you help out the process of starving out that dino by introducing the beneficial bacteria that's going to consume the same nutrients. I also wanted to point out that if you know you're battling dino, do not introduce a cleanup crew like I did. If you introduce a cleanup crew, all you're going to be doing is potentially causing harm to that cleanup crew members who go and feed off of the dino because dino is toxic and will kill them off if they eat it. At that time that I introduced a cleanup crew, I thought I was battling diatom and that's why I did it. That's why it's important to identify what it is that you're trying to treat so that you don't uh, misdiagnose it and then end up causing more harm to your system. The last point I wanted to bring up is I mentioned hydrogen peroxide. Those who have used hydrogen peroxide swear by it. If you intend to use hydrogen peroxide after you've positively identified that you have dyno in your system, I would suggest that you do some research on it because it can be uh, said to be harmful to some of the anemones, crabs, and uh, shrimp. So please do research on that if you plan to introduce any kind of hard hydrogen peroxide into your system. But that'll be it guys. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.